is data science and why is it important across sectors? Looking to increase revenues while reducing costs, big data analytics is the way to go. Google, um, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft are all moving ahead uh, at a great speed in improving this artificial intelligence software. So it's very exciting. I started searching for my first job when all this data science AI boom started. I had no idea what data science was. And after six months, I landed my first job as a data scientist. How could I land a job in data science without knowing what data science is? Well, because I didn't know what it is and nobody did either. The only thing I knew about that time is that I knew programming, I worked with data, I could fit this position. But don't get me wrong, I didn't fit in every data science position. Let's have a look of what are the requirements to become a data scientist. So I just quickly went to this Glassdoor website. I'm pretty sure majority of you are familiar with it and I just quickly type uh, data scientist as a job. So we can see what are the requirements that you actually need to become a data scientist. So for example, in this company, if you scroll down, um, you see that you first need a bachelor's. That's one another thing. Uh, sometimes for a data scientist position to be covered, you either need a bachelor's, a master's, or a PhD, or I've seen some companies that don't even require a university degree. So it very much depends on the company and the place you're applying to. So in this one, for example, they focus a lot on you to be from the field of psychology or economics, which makes sense. And that's something that I don't have as a background, but I have other fields as a background and also STEM related fields that could help me cover this type of position. Uh, you need for this one fluency in R. Um, majority of the ones that I've seen mostly requires Python and this one just requires you to have some experience with it and experience with SQL. These are like the most common types but we're going to see why it differs so much uh, between different companies. For example this one that we have here. So this is one of the things that I will be talking later on because if you look into details about the skills and tools that you need to use for this company for example it doesn't really specify a programming language as such. It doesn't tell you if you need to know Python and R. It just says you need to know uh, computer programming, a programming language and this is Basically, because you're going to be, you know, you're anyways going to be using any tool to generate your data insights, to do analytics. And most of the companies really don't care if you are into C++, if you're into JavaScript, you know, as long as you execute your job fast and you generate exactly the insights that they're looking for to, you know, solve their company problems, you're more than fine with that and you can aim to to get these positions. Uh, I don't know if there is any other interesting one that we can look at it. Uh, this one, for example, it introduces MATLAB and they also specify that you already need to have some experience with uh, deep neural network frameworks. How does this differ with the first interview, with the first job position? Well, it differs because it already implies that you have been working with frameworks that most of the most likely you'll be doing in computer science. You will probably not be working with these frameworks if you study psychology. Uh, maybe some degrees do that nowadays, but most likely not. Let's see what this one has to say. Okay, so this one is a good example. As you can see, this one is it's way more high level. Uh, it's a must that you have solid five years of experience in multiple programming languages. So you need C Sharp, .NET, C++, C, Scala, Python, R, Java. This is a job position that I would 
think it was, would be more related to as a machine learning software developer than as actual data scientist. And you're required to have a master's and PhD within computer science or similar. Then another thing that it is implied in this positions, which is not normally explicit written, is your ability to communicate your insights as well, like access customer requirements and translate them to a proper deliverable. So basically that you need to know how to communicate your insights and how to interpret uh, the data and the results. So I'm gonna be talking in this video about what I was doing in this position and basically why did I choose to just leave the data science world and go to a more narrow, narrow position? So what was I doing as a data scientist in my first job? I was basically doing everything and nothing at the same time. I wanted to solve real problems with data and I just ended up answering some questions from different departments, people that had questions in quality of support, uh, project managers had questions about a specific product, but I didn't feel that I was actually learning anything. I was just manipulating data, building some data analysis, and you know, I came up with amazing ideas on how to use the data and develop and deploy a machine learning algorithm with that data and just integrate it into their software. But it, it was not a possibility with this job position. And I started wondering, is it really this what I want to do? I mean, it's still just my first data scientist position. It cannot be like that. I mean, even though it's not well established and people doesn't have a rough idea about what data scientist is, Everybody wants someone that can just pull a lot of data and make something great out of it and increase the value of their company, for example. So I started researching about, you know, which companies might have an idea about what data science is. And I ended up applying for all the big companies that are out there. I applied for Google, I applied for Amazon, I applied for IBM. I applied for Facebook and to my surprise, I got a lot of different interviews for different positions. It was interesting to see that I was getting any type of position. So everything was called data scientist, but some of the recruiters and some of the hiring managers would just ask me for basic knowledge of Excel. Some would want me to be uh, proficiency in Python, know about SQL, some others wanted me to know about C Sharp and Java. It was just crazy. I mean, I was, I was studying every week for a different position. I, I, I was packing myself with different skills. So I ended up knowing about everything, having, I don't know how many programming skills, uh, knowing about business, uh, improving my verbal and communication skills, I ended up doing everything possible just to land those jobs. So even though it seems like data science is just about solving real life problems and it doesn't matter which tools you use for that, it seems like at some point it does matter. If you want to change between positions and you don't master every possible skill. So I was overwhelmed and it felt like it wasn't for me. There was one interview that made me realize I really didn't want to be a data scientist. I wanted to completely switch my path and go to something more specific and more challenging. I interviewed with uh, IBM in London for a data scientist position back in October. And after passing all the virtual interviews, I flew to London to the final stage. In the final stage, I had to make a presentation with a whiteboard 
and I have to pass a coding task. Um, I was sitting in this room with uh, an expert in machine learning and programming and a salesperson. So already I had an idea of, okay, they're looking for someone that is mixed, but both of them are completely different. They're, they're not data scientists. They're a data science split in two. I felt like this was the right position for myself and making it to the last stage just level up my expectations. I thought that's it. it, it cannot go wrong. And it did not go wrong. I nailed the presentation that I had to do. I nailed the coding task. I only received positive feedback from the hiring manager, but yet I still didn't get it. There was no reasonable explanation why didn't I get that position, but it was happening constantly because you know, you just have to be the perfect fit on everything and you cannot possibly know if you're going to be the fit because it, it doesn't matter which uh, tools you're going to use. It doesn't matter how you are. It doesn't matter anything. It's just you have to be perfect and you have to be the right person or be in the right moment and in the right uh, place. And sometimes you can work super hard and sometimes you can nail everything and still don't get it. So I took a break from applying for data scientist positions because I, I was just receiving the same feedback. Like, so, so what do you want? Maybe you want someone with more business background, you want someone that you don't care if it applies machine learning, what is it that you want? So I switched the idea of trying to fit into the position and just trying to think which position do I actually want to cover. And I took a break from applying for the positions, uh, especially as data scientists. I, I completely stopped looking for a job or an alternative just to think and, and imagine what type of position I want to cover because I was working super hard and I nailed every single data scientist position that came after but it just seemed like it, it doesn't really matter who you are, which tools do you use, it's just about solving a specific problem for a specific company and you might just not be the right fit for that. So after a couple of weeks, I refined my search and I realized that, you know, I'm really passionate about machine learning. I want to build large scale algorithms. I want to work with six, seven different programming languages and mix everything together and build something from scratch. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to do more software engineer oriented, but I didn't want to stop doing machine learning. I didn't want to stop building AI products. Because that's another thing I was lacking. As a data scientist, I didn't see myself building AI products or building algorithms to integrate into software products. I didn't feel like I was in software at all. And I had a software engineering background and I was really passionate about software. And I just wanted to build that. So I did some research and I said, okay, I just have to set aside data science and I just have to become a machine learning engineer uh, within software. And that's exactly what I did. I started looking for more narrow positions. So applied machine learning engineer, uh, I had software engineer with some machine learning background. So when I started looking for machine learning engineer positions, I actually realized that everything that was stated in the job description was more related to what I studied and what I actually wanted to do. So you can see here some of the examples that it's more software oriented. You're going to be doing more complex things. And another thing is that it would be more attached to what I actually studied that it was acoustics, image processing, and computer vision. So I would actually be able to 
go in deep with technologies like natural language processing or computer vision just by being a machine learning engineer. Uh, this other example that we see here, uh, you can see that it requires all those skills that I was talking about. So what I wanted to say with this is that, you know, the reason why I chose to switch from data science to machine learning, it's because I felt that companies didn't know exactly what they wanted from me, what they want from a data scientist. So I started feeling that every single job position was covered subjectively. There was not a real path or career that you must have to fill those positions. So it started becoming very frustrating for me that, oh my God, I cannot believe I cannot be a data scientist. And it was a boom by that time and everybody had to be a data scientist. And how would it be possible that being in the field of AI, being in the field of computer vision, being good at building machine learning algorithms, being good at programming, I couldn't find a data scientist position. So my approach was to completely forget that data science exists. Take it as it, this is a boom word. This is something that it doesn't seem very well established. This is something that I don't want to be in because if I go to something a bit more specific, like machine learning engineer, I could actually develop myself professionally and personally better. And that's essentially why what I managed to do by switching completely from specific data science to specific machine learning engineer. So I didn't want to get too technical in here. I just wanted to share my experience and how I became a machine learning engineer and compared to my experience as a data scientist. There are a lot of resources of different people trying to explain what data science is. I'm not sure if the field is established right now. I think the field is actually massive. There's a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of different data scientist positions. So if you want to become either a data scientist or a machine learning engineer, maybe you can try both. Some There are some overlapping, but you have to figure out whether you want to be more towards generating insights and visualizations, or you want to build models uh, and use the data for that. I would like to know what do you think about this? Uh, what do you think data science is? What do you think a machine learning engineer does? And yeah, hope you liked the video. This is an introductory video, so you can know also a bit about myself and how I became a machine learning engineer. And subscribe if you like it. Yeah, AI, I, I hate the word AI called artificial intelligence. I call it Alibaba intelligence.